Hello again gents, I released this video a few days ago. You guys asked some questions on this community post, so I'm going to answer them. Starting off, 1. What was your overall impression of the West Coast United States? What were some surprising slash not surprising things you encountered and experienced while over there? I really liked LA and San Diego, especially San Diego. That city goes hard. But I really did not like Vegas. The only redeeming thing about Vegas was the gun range, which was sick. But other than that, I just felt shitty the entire time being there. The air was really dry, our room stank of weed, almost no one there was our age, and I just don't like gambling in general, which is not ideal in a place built entirely off of gambling. Another interesting thing was Paywave is not used that much, and you need to carry cash on you at all times. In Australia, I do not carry any cash, and these days I don't even need to carry a card, since I can pay on my phone wherever I go. But in America, it was a big mix. Some places had Paywave, some you could insert your card, and some the card simply wouldn't work and I had to pay cash. A general impression of America was if you somehow get behind in life, you're fucked. You will just end up homeless, and then what do you do? 2. How easy or difficult was coordinating an overseas trip with friends, and what was the best part slash what would you recommend? Also, if you released a frog bucket hat, I would eat it up. Hmm. Everything about the trip was really, really last minute. Sydney literally got his passport four days before we left. Despite that, things worked out pretty well. The car gave us quite a bit of flexibility, but was also very expensive, so keep that in mind. It was a lot. The car was expensive because I'm, I'm a young driver. I booked three hotels before we left and then booked the LA hotel at the end of the stay while we were there, which was needlessly expensive, so don't do that. I think it was about $20,000 total, including I, I paid for all the accommodation. The best part was definitely San Diego since everything was in walking distance and there was constantly stuff to do. As an Australian myself that hasn't left the Southern Hemisphere, how did it feel to be standing the right way up? The air was putrid. It reeked of sulfur. Besides the minigun, what was your favorite gun to shoot? Uh, for me it was the Glock, because shooting all the much rarer guns was really cool, but the Glock just made me feel powerful. I feel like I could just do anything silly at any moment. <laughs> for Sydney, he liked the Barrett 50, Tristan liked the Mare's Leg, Ben liked the Benelli M4, and Kai liked the Uzi. If you could keep one of the guns you shot, which one would you pick? Well, the minigun was the most expensive one. Do you get why Americans love guns now? I do. Did you murder someone? Is Mr. Plush Frog okay? Oof. Did you keep any targets? Ah, oh, I did. Pretty sure these big ones are from the shotgun. Would you <laughs> consider releasing a special edition plushie with a hole in it? <laughs> Alright, that's enough. That's enough gun. How much did the writing slash editing process differ from your usual game videos? End result was still everything I want or expect out of a Martin Cedar Pants video. LOL. But curious to know if it had any unique challenges. Uh, shockingly, there was almost no difference at all. I annotated the footage, wrote a script, and then edited the whole video. Main difference was that a lot of the footage didn't line up chronologically because the timekeeping on the camera was still in Australian time while our phones were on local time in America, but oh well. Another thing that weighed on my mind a bit was that we weren't really doing something in a video game. The people on camera are real people, so I can't just do whatever I want. 6. Didn't know the person who speedruns Just Cause 3 for 20 hours can have friends and goes to the clubs. What was the nightlife like in the US? I know right? Friends. Crazy. Nightlife in the US was alright. The venues were typically better than Australian ones. What I mean by that is like music choice, setup, lighting, and other things like smoke and pyrotechnics at some places was definitely better. However, the vibes in Australian clubs, at least in my experience, are better. More people are up and about and places generally have more energy. Again, at least in my experience. A thing that I don't really ever see here is tables and bottle service, which is where you buy a bottle of expensive champagne or something similar and get a table to sit at. I don't really get it though because a club is not a place you go for sitting down and like drinking. Like, you want to stand up, right? Like, why do you... you, you bleh. 7. Which streamer were you the most excited to see at the party? And... Did you ever find the U2s? And if not, how long do you think you have left? The U2s is back in containment. Let us pray it does not break out again. Getting him out of the walls was a mission. Also, buy it. Right now. So we can get into your walls. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. In terms of streamers, I really like talking to Philzler a lot because even though he had no idea who I was, he was super nice and even followed me on Twitter. 8. Was this your first time shooting a weapon and if you could describe it, how was your overall time in the States? Was it what you expected it to be or a lot less? First gun I shot was here and it was the MP5. Oh, and a whole lot of nothing, never mind. Really? So it went right there? But it didn't cycle properly, so he gave me the MP5 SD, and I shot that instead, which felt even cooler. I got an idea. I'm gonna try the suppress model. Alright. Alright. <laughs> right? That was cool. In terms of expectations, it was pretty much what I expected. We had a really good time, and I'm glad we recorded so much, because in like 5 or 10 years, going through all of it again will be great. 
9. How did it feel to no longer be under threat of getting assaulted by a kangaroo while out of Australia? Felt good not being under threat from the ruse. However, the ruse threat was replaced with people walking around the street with weapons and idiots behind the wheel of three ton pickup trucks barreling around at 100 miles an hour. So, I don't know if I felt particularly safe. I don't know why people like their road trips in the US so much. Everyone's going 80 miles an hour with like dense traffic. It was stressful. <laughs> Instead of kangaroos, he was in danger of getting attacked by a crackhead. Precisely correct. Just carry a gun. Come on, dog. 10. How many sleeping pills did you all take on the trip? Uh, three sleeping pills for me, one on the plane and two on the second night because I couldn't sleep from jet lag, and then lots of melatonin. I learnt later from some comments that you should not mix alcohol and melatonin supplements, so don't do that. Even if it is... Time for bed. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much... This question sucks. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question right there. That's an important one. Really thinking about gonk. What was the worst or least enjoyable part of your trip? Vegas was shit. Waking up every morning after clubs was shit. And the smell. The smells rotated between piss, shit, what do you think of the homelessness and shady stuff going on in Los Angeles while there, and how does it compare to big cities in Australia? Okay, it is so much less bad in Australia. There are homeless people here, but they are clearly nowhere near as neglected by the system. It would be a news item if some dude was walking around the beach with a machete. Venice Beach in particular was a really big shock, especially because I didn't expect it to be so bad in such a nice expensive area. And final question, can you do a tier list of all the nightclubs you've been to, and shout out their locations? Yes I can! Here are the clubs in chronological order. In San Diego, we had American Junkie, which started off well, but the music got worse and just kind of stayed boring, so that's C tier. Metal Bar and Restaurant, the first Mexican club. It actually isn't a Mexican place, but it was Mexican Night or something. Anyway, very fun. It had a lot of energy, but we knew none of the music. B tier. The Patricios. Yeah. I have very little memory of this place, but I do remember it being a bit better than Metal Bar, and this random dude taught us the uh, Lean Like a Cholo dance, which... Yeah. A tier. Vibes. This is the uh, African-American place. It had unmatched energy, and I was extremely fucked. A tier. In Vegas we had one club, Omnia. Now on paper, Omnia sits at the top at S tier, but in reality it was more of a C tier establishment. And finally, in LA, La Cita, which was our first Mexican place of LA. Very, very fun. S tier. The Exchange. Really cool venue, multiple dance floors, good music, and a fight right in front of us. A tier. And finally, Dirty Laundry, which was the best club of the trick. Best music, most people dancing, and for once, it was not 80% men. I know, crazy. S tier. Alright, that's the video. Go watch main video again, please. I beg you. It has very few views, because it got demonetized, and I had to re-upload, and it was...